Hello, and welcome back to Quiet RC. I'm Rob. Today, we're going to be talking about how to paint a body, or at least the way I do it. Okay, so the method that I have been using for a long time, or at least back when I was uh, in the hobby about 20 plus years ago, and now that I'm back into it, is using liquid mask. Uh, a lot of people use masking tape to get their designs on there, cut it out of the masking tape. My preference is liquid mask. Um, it's kind of give or take as far as whether it's faster or not. Um, it just allows you a lot more options uh, down the road as you get better at it. I race a lot of on-road, so these get pretty well beat up. And generally, just because I'm having to do the bodies over and over again, I like to keep the same basic livery. As you can see, it's just silver faded into um, this metallic purple. The design I'm gonna to do today is I'm just gonna add like a little bit of a design into it just so I can show you how you can cut designs into the liquid mask. Any of the stuff that we do today can be just done with rattle cans. For the purple, I'm gonna to have to use uh, airbrush just because I only have uh, purple in, a, um, in an airbrush uh, bottle. Um, we're gonna be doing the same body, this Cadillac. ATSV. As you can see, it has the uh, coating on the outside that you'll peel back when you're all done. Literally, it's like the last step that you do. This kit or this body kit also comes with decals, just basic stuff for the headlights, grill, so on and so forth, and a couple extra things to make it look like one of the real life GT cars. It also comes with a uh, pre cut window mask. That'll be a huge help, even though we're going to be doing a liquid mask. It's still nice to do the um, pre-cut window mask. This one also comes with hardware to put on the rear wing. So first step always when you do these uh, is going to be to cut the body out. I'm going to go over how to do that. Uh, I do it a little bit different, so that we'll start with that first. Okay, the method I'm going to use today is called the score and snap method. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to run a X-Acto or hobby knife uh, along the entire outline that you want to cut out. And then you'll go back in and you'll basically snap it uh, at that score line. And what that does is that gives you a really clean line uh, along the edge of the body everywhere. It makes it a lot easier to clean up and sand up later. Um, I know a lot of people do this just for the straight lines, but I actually will do it for the wheel arches. Most bodies do not come with pre-cut wheel arches unless you're getting one of the nicer bodies from Tamiya. And then I'll show you how I, I do that. For this particular body, because the wing is attached to the original form, I'm going to cut that off first. I might cut off a little bit of the excess around here. You could always use the curved Lexan scissors to do the whole thing if you wanted to, but for me, this just makes it cleaner uh, down the road. All right, that is the whole body. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to go back in, we're gonna take the scissors and we're gonna cut some relief so I can snap them off a little bit at a time, and I'll show you specifically how I do the wheel arches. Now, for this body kit, and there are a lot of body kits like this, part of the rear spoiler, the little side part, is actually molded into uh, one of the wheel arches here. So I'm going to go in and just cut that out. It's a little easier to do it that way, and then I'll sh show you the score lines that I do. So for the side part, you can just come in where it's a nice straight line, just put a few reliefs. Now it's really important that you don't quite go all the way to that line because when you actually close the scissors all the way, it kind of tears it just a really fraction of a millimeter almost. So you can get really close and you can still have the same results without having to worry about that. So we'll go ahead and show you how that snap. Pull away. And I don't know if it's showing up here, but it is a really clean, smooth, straight line, just right along 
even though it's really smooth along here right now, I'll run along a, uh, a little bit of sandpaper to finish that out. Now, to do the wheel arches specifically, and some of the more complex curves with this method, I actually go in here and cut a ton of these reliefs. Again, not going all the way to the score mark. And as the line gets straighter, you can space out those relief cuts a little bit more. And then just the same thing. And again, you can see really nice and clean around here. Gives you a much better starting point when you have to go in and sand all the way at the end. So I will continue that around the rest of the body here. Uh, back here, I'll actually cut this out first, then cut the reliefs and finish up the whole body. Okay, as is the case with a lot of bodies that come just kind of molded as one with their wing attached to the mold, Oftentimes, it is actually inverse of what you're going to paint. So this protective coating that they put on the outside is great for when you're painting and you're all done, whoosh, just tear it right off. Unfortunately, the way they mold these or have to mold these, the wing is kind of upside down from what you would actually want to paint. So right now, I want to paint this side of it. So you can see it's scooped like this. I want to paint this side. So it ends up like this. The paint is underneath. So you're not going to see most of that. However, because of the way they do it, the actual protective film is on the part that I would want to paint. So I'm going to need to take this off right now before I paint the whole thing. So I'll take that off and then I'll paint this side, but I'll also take some masking tape, painter's tape, whatever, and cover this side just because it's a little easier. The next step after you cut it out is to wash it. I'm just here in our utility sink. Important because they use some sort of oil or um, releasing agent on the mold at the factory when they put these together. The issue is, is that oil, releasing agent, whatever you want to call it, will actually prevent the Lexan polycarbonate paint from sticking to this body well as it should. So we're just gonna wash it out. This is actually just some watered down dish soap we keep down here. Now, there are some people who will take this scouring side and scour the inside to help the paint adhere more. I do think that does help. I'm not gonna do it here because basically what you have to do is put the window mass in, then come back and scour it out. And not really worth it right now for me to do this. These on road bodies get beat up so fast that no amount of scouring is going to keep the body together before the paint comes off itself. Shout out to the Etsy creator that made this Homer meme. Not forget the wing. All right, next thing you want to do, make sure it's nice and dry. Use a lint free towel or just paper towels. Get it mostly dry and then we'll leave it for a little while to uh, make sure that's completely dry on its own. Now, this step isn't as important to get it completely dry because we're gonna be using the upper mask. That's obviously got some water to it, but it's in the name. If you were just gonna go straight to painting or putting in the window mask, you would definitely wanna make sure that this was dried out as much as possible. Obviously, if it's wet like this, it's going to cause problems having to paint it here to the Lexan. All right, next step here, you're going to have to mark out ahead of time, or at least it makes it a lot easier to mark out ahead of time where your body host poles are going to go. I'm actually not going to put a hole all the way through. I'm going to wait until after I'm finished painting this. However, I'm gonna make a little bit of a mark just in case these marks that I've actually drawn on here 
get rubbed off and then I won't be uh, in any trouble because I'll have an actual physical mark into the body. Now, I went way too long without getting one of these body reamers. I would use usually just like a drill bit and then finish it out with a cone-shaped rotary tool, Dremel tool bit. But th this is such a better way to go. It makes the hole so clean. You can dial it right in. You can keep going back a little bit by little bit. So that's what I'm going to use to make just a little bit of a mark because it is sharp enough to do that. And this way we don't have to worry about these marks going anywhere. Just a quick side note. If you have a Tamiya car, like a TTO1 or a TTO2, and the body shells they come with are spectacular. I mean, they're really the best in the business. Half the cost of that, of those beginner kits, should be those body shells. This is one I'm in the middle of really just kind of making into more or less a shelf queen. But what's awesome is, to me, it gives you all of the body holes pre, at least, if not pre marked they will full-on put the holes in there for you and they fit perfectly on all pretty much all the Tamiya like I have an old TT uh sorry TA02 and this is from a TT01 and it just drops right on there and fits perfectly here comes the design part now this is where you have a real advantage with the liquid mask because you can make the design as complicated as you want and because you're not having to worry about cutting through multiple layers of masking tape or having to worry if the masking tape is going to bleed, you can do pretty much anything. Now for this, I'm just going to do a simple design uh, kind of off center on the front here. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to go in and trace out the lines. So when I finish the body, I can actually have kind of window um, trim on here. You can see I've done it on this previous body. Just kind of brings the whole thing up a little bit. So these are thin enough where it's easy to cut through and you can get that extra little line. So we'll go ahead and do that. Dentions here that you can follow as well, but when you get to the part of cutting it out, it'll just be easier to see through the provided masks. Now I'm going to draw on some design. I haven't really thought about it too much. Uh, but what's nice with the liquid mask, you can kind of do anything and go from there. I'm going to peel away just a little bit of the edge here. And then the opposite part, and then you can line it up first. So I'll line it up here, here, bring it in. You can see that hits that corner there. Then I'll press down that part that I've actually peeled up. Now I can go through and then with a certain degree of confidence, press the whole mask into place. If you're not going to do liquid mask and you're going to use regular masking tape, I cannot emphasize how important the actual edges are, getting those as sealed as possible. All right, now comes the time. Use some liquid mask. It's my opinion that you should do three generous coats of this. The reason is when you're finished, each layer or each design that you're doing and you want to peel it away, if it's too thin, you're going to spend all your time just kind of picking and picking and picking at like these little bits. Now that we are done with the warm liquid goo phase. Warm liquid goo phase complete. Stage three. We're going to go ahead and cut out our design. I'm also going to go in and do the windows as well. It is really important that you use a brand new blade for cutting out this liquid mask. Even if you feel like you've just used a blade once or something like that, better safe than sorry because this stuff doesn't take any pressure to cut through, but it will kind of tear if it's not actually cut. 
and on that pressure, you don't really need to apply much pressure at all. If you remember when we were cutting the body itself, we were scoring and snapping. So if you go in here and you put too much pressure, you're essentially just creating another scoring spot. And when that car hits a corner or something like that, it's going to break along those. So you do want to use very light pressure. You don't need much at all. I'm going to try and just make these the smoothest lines possible. When you're painting this stuff, what you really want to do is you really want to work from darkest color to lightest color. And that's where the power of the liquid mask, the benefits of it really come into play. Because if you have a spot on your body that you want to be black, and it's just like a single pinstripe, or in this case, we're just doing the trim around the windows, you would have to use masking tape to mask off the whole body to do the black first. Or you could paint the whole thing and you have to do all your backing and everything like that, and have to worry about if that black was gonna bleed through on any of the lighter colors. But since we're doing this liquid mask, I can just take off little parts because I've done the whole body in this liquid mask. Then we'll actually do the copper on the little design. I'll back that in silver to make it pop and spark a little bit. Then I'll back that in white to make sure that nothing bleeds through and that'll actually make sure that it stays nice and light. And then I'm going to do a little purple for the back. I'll back that in silver when I do the whole thing in silver, because that'll be the silver to purple fade. And then I'll back everything in white to make sure that everything's nice and bright. And this base cover coat black from Duratrax, it actually works really nicely to back everything and make sure it's nice and strong. The color is really stays and vibrant. It's PS31 smoke for the windows. So that'll make it look really sharp. I am going to be using this ProLine paint for airbrush. Again, it's just the only black that I have right now. However, you could definitely do this part in a spray can, so no problems there. I also throw on a mask when I do this, and then I like to have some gloves on as well. As you can see here, I've actually gone very light on my first coat, and this goes especially for using spray cans. You wanna go very, very light on your coats, especially your first coat. What that's gonna do is that's actually gonna seal around the edges without having so much of that paint that it wants to seat behind the masking tape. So you can see up here where I have a little bit of kind of it popping up, that's gonna kind of seal it right around that edge there. And on top of that, it actually dries extremely quickly if you go in these thin little layers, you're kind of cheating yourself if you put on this thick layer because it's going to take much longer to dry. If you do it with, even with an airbrush, especially with a rattle can, if you go really light, it's going to dry in a matter of like 90 seconds. And you can go ahead and do a bunch of these light coats. Just set it down, I don't know, count to 100, whatever. Black is all done. You can see it on the outside here. We've gotten all the edges here nice and clean. Next, we're going to do this little design up here. I'm going to do it in a copper color. So again, very light for the first couple of coats. You can put on a little bit heavier after that, but you're going to do very light coats up front. Went and peeled away just the design that I wanted. So now we will see how that goes. And I just hit that with a couple coats of silver, literally just two coats, just to give it a little extra sparkle, I guess. And now I'll just hit it with a couple coats of white just to protect it from getting any bleed through from any other colors. Now comes a, one of the most satisfying parts is we're going to peel the liquid mask off of pretty much the rest of the body. We'll give this a kind of light wipe down on the inside. You can see some of the paint 
that was on the liquid mask has kind of flaked off and hung out inside the body. So we'll go ahead and just kind of wipe it down. As usual, nice light coats. Same thing we did with the copper part. We're going to back this in silver, but this time we're going to do the whole body because that is the paint scheme is to be fading from purple to silver towards the front. Now about uh, three coats of white, then a black backer, then smoke, then we're done. It's the Duratrax base cover coat black. I've taken off the mass of the window and we are on the very last step here. We are going to use to me is PS31 smoke. How smoked or tinted you want the windows depends on how many coats you're gonna do. All done with smoking the windows. You can see it's a little bit darker. This has a nice finish to it. And now we do the other super satisfying part, removing the protective outer film that comes on the body. I have a little tip later on what you can use this film for, for other designs if you wanna do or other methods. Should match the back. Next step, decals. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use pretty much two different methods. I'm going to use what some people call the wet method, which is a little spray bottle uh, with water and just a dash of dishwasher liquid soap. And this allows you to be able to kind of put the decal down a couple different times before you actually have to squeeze all the water out and it's stuck there. However, there are ones like these complicated rear tail lights where the water method actually makes it a little bit more difficult because you're constantly having to like squeeze it out, squeeze it out until it finally sticks. And sometimes the crease is enough that it, that it doesn't really stick very well. Using the wet method to apply decals. I have this relatively large piece here and it's got to kind of go right in the middle here. And you could put it down, line up stuff, do your best. Sometimes you'll hit it, sometimes you'll have to pick it back up. But if you actually take this mixture of water and just a splash of dish soap, you can put it down and reposition it a few times without fully committing to where you've hit. That's about where I want it. And you can even see there's some air bubbles in there that I'm going to be able to squeeze out because I use this wet method. This body kit has the side part of the wings are separate and I'm going to leave them clear because I'm actually just going to put a big decal over them. But in the meantime, I do need to attach them and the way that I do it is I just take some of this uh, shoe goo, which is great, little flexible, great hold, clear, if you need it in that instance to be clear, and just smear it on the side of this wing. And I'm just gonna push that in place here. Then I'll take a binder clip, clip it in place. Okay, we're just a few days later here and I've Put just a couple more decals on it to finish it out. Um, I just wanted to come back and talk a little bit about the whole process. Anything I've done here can be done with rattle cans and masking tape. The liquid mask is either easier in the long run, in my opinion, especially if you want to do more intricate designs. For example, I have this uh, associated body for a uh, buggy and this design would be a huge pain with just masking tape. But the liquid mask, it is actually easier than the finished product would suggest. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about the paint that I uh, tend to use. First of all, no matter what you do, 
uh, you have to make sure you're using paint for polycarbonate or Lexan. It's really important because if you go and use paint that is for like static models or something of that nature, uh, paint will flake off immediately. The polycarbonate paint is actually meant to flex with the body so it won't actually flake off when you have a collision or something like that. Now, the best paint, hands down, is the Tamiya line, their PS line. Um, they have a TS and a PS line that will do that, almost exactly the same, except for it'll say PS on it. And that is for polycarbonate, easy to remember, P, polycarbonate. Now, the Tamiya uh, paint is well, more expensive than uh, most of these on the per liter or per milliliter basis, um, but only very slightly. I've used uh, the Trexus paint, and it basically, um, it, while it's the least expensive, um, you just don't get much coverage at all. And I can show you with uh, one of my 12 scale bodies here. I mean, I can see through it, and this is the same number of coats, several coats with a purple, several coats with a silver. So it's just not worth it in the end. <clears throat> Um, the Duratrax that I've used, I've used this for several bodies, also works great, um, but the Tamiya is just the best stuff. As far as airbrush paint goes, uh, of the currently available options that are out there, like Spastics and I think even Fast Color is still kind of around, um, the stuff that I've used is Proline, and I'm very happy with the results for that. Pretty easy to use, you just can squirt it right in your cup and go. The only thing holding it back is probably just my skill level. I used to use Pactra paints. And they were great because they had a huge line of colors. I mean, just really cool colors, metal flakes, everything like that. But it seems like Testers, the company that actually uh, owns Pactra, doesn't make them anymore. So the stuff that I have uh, appears to be old stock. In fact, some of the paint I've opened has like clumped together inside, which is too bad because it was great paint. As far as body kits go, hands down, the best body kits are Tamiya. Um, I have this... Mercedes 190E that I've done. And as you can see, it's spectacular looking. I mean, the decals they supply, the body itself is thick. All the lines are really crisp and everything like that. So if you ever get around to getting one of these, one of the best body kits you can do. The unfortunate thing is it's so nice, it's hard to justify erasing it because it will get banged up pretty bad. One thing you can do to lift the body kits a little bit, even with something that you're gonna race, uh, even if you've just done a very simple paint job or it doesn't have a bunch of decals on it, is you can use this graphic tape. Um, it's thin, matte black pinstripe tape, and you can put it around the door frames or the panel gaps, and that'll really kind of lift how good and how realistic the body looks. My bonus tip is how to use the exterior protective film that's on the body when you're painting it to do a matte finish on just certain areas. So I have this Tamiya Dynahead uh, truck, and one of the things I did was I painted the whole bed black, and then just on the outside, after everything was finished, all of the window smoking and everything like that, is I went and just trimmed around this bed, even around like the little engine area here, and then uh, even did a little detail right here, peeled the protective film that was on the outside and sprayed the matte finish from Traxxas on the outside. I will say, as much as I was dogging on Traxxas paint earlier, this matte finish actually turned out really well. Part of the reason it doesn't have to be very thick to get the effect. Because of where the, the matte finish has been done, it's very unlikely that when it rolls or something like that, it'll actually chip off. Because the paint being on the outside, it is susceptible to being chipped off. That's why you don't really paint the bodies on the outside. Painting bodies is probably my favorite part of the hobby. I always have a few of the bodies, you know, ready to go, kind of in the pipeline to be worked on. I'm genuinely bummed when a kit comes and it's pre-painted. Uh, some of the Tamiya kits that have come out recently, they pre-paint the, the bodies, which is fine. You can do box art that way, but I tend to go non-box art uh, with my cars. However, I fully appreciate why people would want to skip this step, the painting the body altogether. It can be very tedious. Um, but I would love to see more people get into painting bodies and being able to kind of express themselves a little bit through their bodies. Well, I hope this video helped you out. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe if this is something that you're interested in seeing more of. Also, I have about four minutes of footage of me just snapping off the uh, 
Lexan from when I was trimming the body. It's probably some of the worst ASMR in the world, but if you want me to just post four minutes of that, let me know down below. Thanks. We'll talk to you later.